Hello friends, uh, welcome back. Let us uh, continue with uh, our introduction to the mechanical behavior and testing of materials. So this uh, would be a rather short lecture. So in this lecture, uh, I just wanted to introduce you to some of the basic terminologies which uh, we will be using all through this uh, course. Uh, now, uh, in our previous lecture, if you could recollect, uh, we just uh, defined what we mean by mechanical behavior or in this course, what we actually call uh, mechanical behavior. Now, we defined it as a response of a material when it is exposed to a definite mechanical condition. Uh, owing to the scope of the previous lecture, we did not uh, elaborate much on what these mechanical conditions were. Now in this lecture, I just want to uh, introduce few uh, concepts through which you can understand what these mechanical conditions are and how we refer to them. Now uh, I hope uh, you are uh, comfortably sitting on a chair uh, during this lecture. I also believe that uh, some of you might be uh, lying down while listening to this lecture. If so, it's wonderful. Uh, I really uh, envy you and I hope I could be you. Uh, but for the sake of this discussion, let us assume that you are sitting on a chair. And uh, for the subsequent uh, discussions, let us just consider this particular view of the chair. Now, uh, in order to uh, discuss or in order to see uh, what these mechanical conditions are, let us reconstruct a schematic of the chair in the view that we saw in the previous slide. So let this be uh, the seat of your chair. Pardon me, my drawing might not be that precise uh, because uh, uh, given the conditions that we are in, I am forced to use something called as a digital writing pad. So it's, writing, it's, it's like writing on a glass. So it will not be that precise, but I will just try to get uh, the meaning across. So please bear with me here. So again, this would be the seat of your chair. And uh, the front leg of it, let's mark by this. And this would be the rear leg. And uh, your support to the, your backbones will be in this region. Now, very rarely when you sit in this chair, your weight will be uniformly distributed. It happens very rarely. Now, uh, since this is an introductory lecture and uh, I'll be just uh, introducing you to something that you already know, I want you all to just sit back and sit back and relax. So what I mean by that is your weight, uh, the distribution of weight will not be uniform, but rather accumulated in this region. So in this region, the weight will, ra uh, will rather be accumulated or it will be more uh, expressed by a uh, large number of arrows when compared to the weight distribution that is here. Now, uh, please remember, I'm using the term weight, not mass. Um, if you could recollect, uh, there is uh, a different hour, there is uh, a difference between weight and mass, even though we use it synonymously. While mass is a scalar term, uh, it's just a number, it just uh, um, counts or rather quantifies uh, the amount of material there is but weight uh, is a force is a vector term and it is generally it also include uh, a, a, an acceleration term which in our case would be the acceleration due to gravity so mass which is a scalar which it just quantifies the amount of a material weight it includes mass along with uh, the acceleration due to gravity so you have the component of mass and weight, which gives you the unit kg. And since you also have uh, the component of uh, the acceleration due to gra uh, gravity, uh, uh, whose uh, unit is meter per second square, this would be the unit for weight or the force in a more technical term. And this is nothing but, uh, or what we commonly refer to as Newton. And, uh, when uh, we talk about weight in the in the context of mechanical behavior, we also refer to it as load. So load is what we are talking about when in this lecture we talk about weight. So when I say your weight when you are uh, sitting back and relaxing, it's not uniformly distributed. All I mean by that is the force, that is the load, 
is not uniformly distributed it is much more accu accumulated in the rear end when compared to the front end of your seat now let's continue further uh, just to uh, re-emphasize well, when i say the weight what i mean by that is the force component of it and uh, the actual technical term would be load and uh, this term this load is one of the terminology that i want to introduce to you in this lecture and this will be with us all through the semester and uh, when someone talks about load what they mean by that is a particular force which has the unit of newton and which is nothing but mass coupled with the acceleration term to it in kg meter per second square i hope you are comfortable with that now let's let's go back to our sitting posture we have our uh, seat we have our uh, rear leg and we have our front leg now now let's do a thought experiment now let us uh, imagine that instead of having a sturdy and a strong leg we have a leg that is rather uh, flexible that is uh, that could bend or that could be stretched now in that case when uh, when you have a load in this region which is noticeably higher or significantly higher than the one here what would you expect now generally what would happen is that the seat which is now maybe completely horizontal uh, in uh, in its uh, state would be inclined because uh one of the leg or both of these legs are rather uh, we assumed it to be flexible so they would be inclined and uh, the overall length of this leg would be reduced by the load here so it will be something like this at the same time what would happen is this leg here the front leg will be stretched are you here with me thus far the thing is when you have a higher degree of load at one end and at the lower degree of load at the other end the, the place or the leg which holds the higher degree of load since we assume the leg to be flexible will be shrunk while the other will be stretched because we want to maintain the continuity it will happen in this way now in the technical terms this load that actually strings this leg is called compressive load this uh, term you might have already uh, come across uh, uh, you might have already known uh, this term is just compressing of the leg and uh, this uh, is also a technical term which we will be using in this course so compressive load is nothing but uh, it allows your uh, leg to get strung and uh, that is what we observe here now in this front leg what you see is the expansion and now when you expand uh, this front leg to uh, more than a certain limit what happens is that you would expect a crack to form here this should break in the sense the more you apply or the more uh, the uh, when you increase the amount of load in this uh, rear end and um, there is uh, and it goes beyond a certain limit what happens is that this leg fails and it cracks now before the failure of this leg or before this uh, leg gives in what has happened is this leg has stretched and it has increased in its length now when it compared to uh, its original length it is stretched and this leg when it compares when you compare it to its original length it is shrunk now we have called this as compressive loading and now what would we call this now uh, we could call it as a pulling load we could call it as a stretching load but those would not be technical so we have a wonderful technical term for it and uh, it is called as tensile loading now what do we mean by tensile loading is uh, it's nothing but it comes from the and that's the reason why i have included this uh, a small screenshot here it comes from the latin term tensalis which means that it's able uh, which means the ability to stretch so what we saw in the previous uh, thought experiment when we saw the rear leg that is compressing we saw the stretching of the front leg and this stretching of the front leg or the load that caused the stretching of this front leg is called as tensile load
Now, from uh, a simple sitting posture, we are able to discern that depending on the distribution of weight, it is possible that there could be compressive load at one end and the tensile load at the other end. Just to reiterate, the compressive load is when uh, you are uh, when the load is it strengthens the leg here. If you replace the leg with any experimental specimen, what you are actually doing is uh, you are trying to string the specimen, and this is what this is what we refer to as compressive load. And here, in order to maintain the continuity of this whole uh, seat, the front leg stretches or it expands and the load that causes this expansion is called as tensile load and again if you have an experimental specimen and if you want to apply the tensile load to this experimental specimen the way we would do it is we will try to stretch it now uh, let us extend our uh, thought experiment a little further now supposing you are bored of this lecture i hope you are not but supposing you are bored of this lecture and uh, supposing again you have uh, resumed you are uh, we are resumed to uh, we, are, we have resumed back to our uh, solid legs instead of the flexible one and now you want to lean back and lean back further so that you are just now resting on these two legs just two real legs the whole weight is resting on the two real legs rear legs and uh, the front leg is suspended in the air so this is ground and the whole weight is resting in this rear legs and uh, the front leg is suspended in the air now what you want to do is or what you would like to do is, is you just like to swing around just want to swing around and uh, just to relax yourself you want to do that now what the leg or the rear leg experiences is some sort of a twisting load when you swing around what the rear leg experiences is some sort of a twisting load and this load is what we call as torsion now when you have a load that strings a material we call it as compression when we have a load that uh, tends to stretch your material we call it as tensile and when we have a load that tends to twist your leg or your material we call it as torsion so these are the three basic terminologies which i want to get across in this introductory lecture now you might ask when uh, i lean back or lean back to the extent that one of my or two two of my front legs are uh, suspended in the air and when i then swing around will it not be the combination of compression plus torsion yes you are absolutely right it is the compression or uh, combination of two um, loading conditions that is compression and torsion and both these loading condition contribute to what we cumulatively call that call as mechanical condition so this is also one of the things uh, one of the aspect of the lecture that uh, even though we have distinguished ourselves uh, we distinguish the different loads as compression torsion and uh, tensile in this lecture the combination of these three can express themselves as a mechanical conditions as we have seen here so i hope uh, you are able to understand it understand the different loading conditions that have been introduced in this lecture these are pretty simple uh, i just wanted to make it as simple as possible and give an example based on something that you would experience in the in the in the day to day basis uh, if possible Uh, if time permits think of such examples where uh, given the same setup like the chair here you could impose both uh, all these three kind of uh, three types of uh, loading condition compression torsion and tensile to put it simply pushing pulling or stretching and twisting the setup should be the same is the, uh, are there any such setups where uh, just by changing your positions or just by changing uh, your uh, the way you load it you are able to impose all these three types of conditions let think about such set setups that you come across in your day to day life thanks for listening and uh, we will see ourselves in the next lecture bye